Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In the previous video, we started our path on coding our binary numbers with Pixels app. We actually coded this which is kind of a pixel area where we can click on it. And you can see I, this is there, my emulator over here. So it starts out like this, but now you can kind of make anything you want. So I can make like a happy face or a sad face for today but that is working so now we need to work on the main part of this and this is really why we're building this app is so you really understand how to convert binary to decimal and decimal to binary so you're prepared for the AP computer science principles exam so let's look at this converting binary numbers to decimal. In our unplugged activity, you did this away from the computer. You learned how to do it. Now let's actually code an app that can do it for us. Let's go to blocks. And this was our, for up here, I'm simply going to collapse that. It hasn't gone anywhere. I'm just collapsing it. I can expand it and I still have my comments, but I'm just going to collapse it for now because we are not going to deal with that in this video. Now, something we didn't do in the last video, which we normally do, is our home button, our, our home image. And you can see it's clickable, 35 by 35. I want to go ahead and do, do that, get that out the way before we forget. So if I click on this, nothing happens. Very simple, image home, come to the top. What do we want to do? We want to go home. So I can do it in two ways. I'm going to go to control. I can do close screen because I got here from the home screen or I can do open another screen with screen name and I'll just do that. And I'm gonna fill it in with text and I need to type it exactly like this, capital S screen with a one. So I'm gonna do screen one. So let's just test that that works to make sure. Interact with binary numbers. So you can see that works. Time to draw with pixels and binary. And it brings us back here. All right, we got that out the way. Now let's look at converting binary to decimal. So these are the little bits. Remember, we go from the left. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And let's look at this specifically over here. If I scroll down, this is text box bit 0 text box bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, bit five, bit six, bit seven. So we have a byte here. Remember eight bits is a byte. So we're gonna have the user either type in a one or zero. And if they type in a one, we all want to give them what that value is in decimal. So let's go ahead and get that going. So just so we know our values, let's find out what those binary decimal values is. And let's have a place to store it. So let's make a variable and let's call it binary decimal values. Now this is going to be a list of all the values. So like two to the zero or two to the one or two to the two or two to the three. Let's make that list. So I'm going to make a list. And so it looks aligned like this. You're normally used to having a list go down, but you can actually right click on this and I'm going to do inline inputs. And I know I need eight so that's zero one two three four five six and eight so our binary decimal values what are that so two this is a zero bit which is two raised to the zero I could put that value in here, but I want to emphasize what I, I want to emphasize that you all know what these different values are. So I'm going to versus putting 
anything to the zero is one. I could put one in here, but I want to emphasize that it is binary and you're using two to the zero. So let's have Alpha Inventor calculate for us. So we're going to math and you can see I have this raised sign. So the first number is your base and this is your exponent. So I'm going to pull this and put it in there. And I want to pull this in with numbers. This is going to be two. So this is going to be two raised to the zero, which is one. But again, I want to emphasize in this app that you understand that that's two to the zero. So versus just putting one in here, I'm actually using the math feature to show you that. So that's my zero bit. For my one bit, I'm just going to duplicate this. It's actually two raised to the one. For my two bit, we have two, duplicate three, and when you get the point four just like we did on a piece of paper, just like you would do on the AP exam, you should know that the bit location is two raised to that location. And I think I have too many, because I should have only two raised to the seven, because remember here, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have too many bits my list so I'm just going to move it like that and move that away so now you can see I have 2 to the 0 which is the bit the value of this if a 1 is here 2 to the 1 which is just 2 is the value if a 1 is put here 2 to the 2 is the value if this bit if a 1 is placed here and so on and so on we've done this already this is kind of our reference list of what we're going to do. So let's convert this now. So to convert it, when someone presses this, it should grab these values. If a 1 is in the location, for example, if a 1 is here and a 1 is here, I should grab this location. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven. So I should say, if a one is here, I know it's going to be this value, two to the seven, plus grab this value, which is zero, one, two, and the third bit location, two raised to the three. That's how we're going to do this. There is an easier way to do it. I will show you that after. But I want to really make sure that you understand how to actually convert binary numbers to decimals. So that's why we're doing it the longer way. So when someone presses to decimal, I'm going to come here, binary to decimal, pull that out, and let's make a procedure. Remember, you're going to need to make procedures for your AP exam, the create performance task. I'm going to click on procedure, I'm going to pull it out, and let's call this procedure my my binary to decimal conversion pretty straightforward and this is simply going to call that procedure now this procedure is going to be long there is a easier way to do it so this is going to be a lengthy process again because I'm making sure that you know how to do this but let me just show you, if I go to math, there is this block right here, convert number, and you can see base 10 to hex. You can also see base 10 to binary or binary to base 10. So I could use this one block and inside of here and pretty much come up with an answer that's going to be a lot shorter. But again, this app is really for you to understand how to truly know how to convert binary to decimal and decimal to binary so you can be prepared for the AP exam. So we're not going to use this one block. I challenge you to try to figure out your own way how to convert using this block already provided for you in the math section of the built-in blocks. Let's go ahead and delete that. So, so let's do our comments. 
convert binary bits from user to a decimal value. And what does that entail? Number one, check each bit, which is text box bit seven through text box bit zero, if it is a one. One, if text box bit number is a one, then calculate that value into result. B, continue checking bits and adding to the result. So pretty much I'm going to start here and if there's a one there I'll calculate the value which is 2 raised to the 7 then I'll move to this value. If there's a one here I'll add 2 raised to the 6. If there's a one here I'll add 2 to the 5 and that's what we're pretty much going to do. You can also see I need to have a result so I can save that I could make a global variable, but let's just get used to some local variables. So the difference is a global variable can be used anywhere in our screen. A local variable, if we click on variables here, this is a local variable, means, which I'm just gonna call it result right now, and let's just make it zero. So result can only be used inside of here because it's local to this area. So like if I pull results, result makes sense in here, but if I put result over here, you can see it says select divided item from the dropdown. So that's the difference. A local is only inside of the block. It knows what result is. Globals, as you can see, I can put this anywhere because now it's global in the entire screen. So let's delete these. All right, so I know I have a result. And I want to start at this location and go all the way down. Again, there is a faster way to do this, but I want to make sure you understand how to convert to binary to decimal. So I want to look if this location is one. Well, I need to check all of these if they're equal to one. So I probably want to make a procedure for that. And that's what we're actually going to do. So I'm going to go to procedures. I'm going to pull in this result procedure because this is a rev procedure where I do all the calculations inside of it. This one is a result and this result is I want to check is if whatever I pass in is equal to one. So I'm going to pull this out and let's just call it is bit one. So inside of here I'm going to need an input and let's call it bit value. And all I just want to know is if this bit value is equal to 1. So I'm going to go to math, pull in my equal sign. I'm going to say, is my bit value equal to 1? And I'll add a comment. Check the bit value passed in is equal to 1. 1 and return. Now I can check any one of these by passing the value. So let's actually do number seven. So I'm going to say if the bit is that. So I'm going to go to if. I want to check is the bit one. So this is a procedure I just made. I'm going to go to procedures. I'm going to pull this in. What is the bit value? Well, I want to get the value of the text here. That is TBX text box bit 7. So I'm going to click on text box bit 7. Scroll down and this is the text that's currently in there. So I'm saying is the value in here 1? If it is, what do I want to do? I need to have a result. I have it up here. So I'm going to say result is equal to what? It's actually equal to this location. And I could reference this by going to the to the list, but I will just again I want to make sure that you understand the binary part of this. So I'm going to duplicate this. I know we should not be duplicating, but I want to make clear to you if my bit seven is one, my result for that is two raised to the seven. I'm I'm really showing you I'm doing it 
longer than I have to because I want to make sure you understand how binary works. So that's my result, if only that was on. But I still need to go and check the rest of these, right? It's gonna look very similar. But I wanna just quickly, let's update this little label so we can see if this is going to work or not. So that label is right here, label binary to decimal. I wanna get the text and I'm gonna put it at the bottom and I just simply want to make it the result. And let's just talk, let's put in some text to speech to say something like, here is your result. So if I press this, this is a one, it will say the result is two raised to the seven. Remember this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's two raised to the seven. And it should show me that here. Let's see. To decimal. So you can see. To decimal. Here's the result. But this is not speaking because to decimal, if I expand it, you can see down here I have this little block here, text to speech, and it reads to decimal. I could disable this, and let me just show you. If I disable this block, here's your result. Then it says, Here's your result. Here's your result. So I'm just going to disable this for now. That way, when I click on this, here's your result. I can say here's your result, and let's add in the results. I'm gonna collapse this again. And I'm just gonna do join. And I'm gonna put a space, and I'll get my results and put that in there. So now, let's see. Here's your result, 128. So that gives me that. But I'm only doing it for seven. I got to do it for the rest of these. But also, think about this. If I do this, what if somebody puts in a two? Remember, you're only supposed to put in one or zero. Here's your result, zero. So, two, is it one? No. It didn't do this. Well, what should I do? I should force this to only be zero or one. So if it's not one, this should automatically be set to zero. Let's figure that out. Is the bit one, bit seven equal to one? If it is, do this or else. So I'm gonna click on the setting, I'm gonna click else. I wanna change text put seven to zero. So they can't, even if they put in a two, it's gonna change it to zero. If they put in a three, they're gonna change it to zero. Any number they put in other than one, it will change it automatically to zero. So let's do that. Come up here. And I'm going to pull this in. And I'm simply gonna make it zero. So now let's try this again. Click on this. 2, when I click on, here's your result, 0, you can see there, it changed it to 0. If I click here again, let's say I make it 9, and you can see, when I click here, and I click check mark, if I go to my bit, I have lost focus, and get focus. So. Lost focus, if you look at that, event raised when the text box is no longer selected for input, such as the user touches a different text box. So there's no real way if they minimize this, if they put the check mark, we would hope that they would have an action here, but you don't really have that. You can do that in other languages, but in Apple Inventor currently, when I press the check box, this is still active. I can't automatically calculate it. I still have to simply Here's your result, zero. So when I press the decimal, it fixed it. Let's try it one more time. When I click up here, let's say something really crazy. So like one, two, five, four, 
all of that, right? Get rid of that. Here's your result zero. So that is working. If the bit is one, it will calculate it, or else it, it'll get rid of any other number that they did because it can only be one or zero. So if it's not one, we're making sure that that bit value stays zero. Let's do let's do two more for your six and five. And then I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to let you do the rest of these. That way, I make sure you really understand how to do this. And then we'll move on. So for bit six, it's going to look very similar. I'm going to check if bit six is on. Then I want to add, so you can see, continue checking the bits and adding to the result. I want to add two to the six to whatever my result is. So really simple. If I go to if, pull that in. I'm going to use the is bit one procedure we made. I'm going to come to text box bit six. I'm going to get the text. If this bit is on, so that is this, I want to update the result. But let's see if I did this, and again, I know I could reference this list, but I'm just going to duplicate this that way you understand so if I did this it would erase 2 to the 7 so if I had this right here's your result 64 so if I do this here's your result 64 this is 1 should be 128 but because I sang here if bit 6 is on 2 to the 6 that becomes 64. So I don't actually want to reset it. I want to, again, here I told you, I'm adding to the result. So what do I have to do? Add comes from the subject called math, and I'm going to pull this in. I'll put this in the second one, and I want to add to result. So I'm simply going to get the result. So now this is saying, if bit six is on, get whatever the result is. So if one if bit 7 was on, it'll have currently 128 in it, so it'll be 128 plus 2 to the 6, which is 64. And let's just add in our comments so we know this. This is really 64. And add in this comment as well. We know this is 128. So now that we've did result plus 2 to the 6, this should no longer be 64. It should actually be 128 plus 64. Let's see. Here's your result 192. There you go. So you can see that's working. I want to do it one more time for the bit 5, and then I'm going to have you pause the video, and you will do the rest of these. should be pretty straightforward. So for bit 5, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but wait. What happens if I press a 2 in here? Here's your result, 128. So it's only getting the value of this. It's not getting this because it's not 1. And someone typed in the wrong value. Remember, we're going to need this. Else, I want to make my bit 6 equal to 0. So we're forcing them. If they type in a 1, yeah, we're going to check it, and we'll add in the value. If they type anything else, we're going to make sure that that value is 0. If they type in a number other than 1, we're going to make sure that that value stays 0. So don't forget that part of it. So now if I do this, right? Here's your result, 128. So you can see it made it 0. If I make it 1. Here's your result, 192. So there you go. We're pretty much going to do this exact same thing all the way down. And that's why I told you it is longer. But again, this really shows you how you're actually calculating binary to decimal. That way you know how to do it for your AP exam. So let's do one more. And then I will let you finish the rest. I'm going to pull in my 5. Go to our procedures. Is the fifth bit on? So I'm going to go down to text box bit 5. I'm going to pull in text and I'm going to pretty much do this right here. So I want to get my result and I want to 
add to whatever the result is. So I'm going to math. I'll pull this in. So I'm going to change my result to whatever my result is plus plus the next bit value, which is up here, 2 raised to the 5. So let's just see this working. So if I click here, 1, and let me not forget before I do this, add in my else, else, if you type anything else, I want to make sure bit 5 stays. So if I type in 111, and let's get rid of this one because we haven't done that yet. But if I type in 111, so 1 in the 7 plus 1 in the 6 position is 192. Well, 5, let's add the comments, this is 32. So it should be 32 plus 192. Let's see. Here's your result, 224. So you can see that works. But let's make sure that these are working. So let's make this zero. Here's your result, 160. So let's make this zero and change this value. Here's your result, 96. So you can see these are working. Now you see how I'm doing it. This was the seventh bit. We got textbook seven and we raised the result was two raised to the seven. Textbook six, if it's on, we got whatever the result is plus two raised to the six, which is 64. Or if textbook five, bit five is one, we're getting whatever the result is plus two raised to the five, which is actually 32. And for each one of these, if any the user types in anything other than a one, we're making sure that we make that value zero. So pause the video, and I want to see you complete these. You have bit four, bit three, bit two, bit one, bit zero. Do you really understand how to change binary to decimal? Pause the video and go ahead and start. All right, well, I've finished mine. You can see if I type in, let's just, you can see when I click on it, actually let's erase this so we don't have to force the user to erase. So let me show you a quick thing, just like we did in the previous video using the any component. Anytime someone clicks on a text box, you want to empty out that text box. So like when I click here, I don't have to first delete before I glue that. So let's come down here to any. And these are text boxes. I'm going to do any text box. Anytime any text box got focused, so that is when the text box is just selected for input, such as when the user touches it. So anytime the user, any text box gets selected, I want to make sure I clear out that text box. So I'm going to go back to any component and I want to set the text of that. So I'm going to come here to set text box text of component. And let me just add a comment. Anytime a text box is touched, clear the numbers. Clear the text, which is numbers. So user doesn't have to delete the previous numbers typed in. So really simple. Anytime any text box gets touched, set the text of that text box to an empty text box. So for example, zero is here. When I click here now, you can see it clears it. So if I have one and one and one and one, let me just show you. If I click here, that gets rid of that. If I click here, it gets rid of that. So anytime any text box, that kind of clears it, which kind of makes it easier for the user. So let's actually, let's say one, let's just test this, that I got everything working. And I press. Here's your result three. Well, look what happened. If I put these two in, but because we have this, if it's not one, make it zero, it filled in the other text boxes. 
So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 is actually equal to 3, which is 2 to the 0, which is 1, plus 2 to the 1, which is 2. So 2 plus 1 is actually 3. Let's do 1 here, and let's just try 1 here. And here's your result, 39. 39. Let's turn in all our bits. So that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 1, and that's a 1. So 2 to the 0, plus 2 to the 1, plus 2 to the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's your result, 255. Which is exactly what we thought it would be. So we have that working. Last part of the app is converting decimal to binary. And to do that part, we will complete that in the next and final video for this app. Go ahead and move over to that video.